hey, are you a big fan of hilarious pranks, poorly considered life choices, and animal shapeshifting? Well, then you might be interested in learning about a certain highly enigmatic northern Germanic pagan deity. I'm Frank, haha, <laughs> just kidding, my name's actually Jake, and I'm in a trickstery mood today because we're going to be talking about Loki from Norse mythology. So Loki was the kid of a Jotun named Forbaudi, but thanks to a blood ritual with Odin, they were actually pretty tight with the Aesir and Vanir. But every now and then they liked to pull some sick pranks on their friends, but it was all in good fun and the gods were always good sports about it. Loki, did you steal my wife's hair? Yes, yes I did. Ow, my bone! Buckle up, buddy, that's one out of 206. We've got a long way to go. Or, alternatively, I could go see if I can find some dwarves to make Sif some brand new hair? That could work, but if you come back empty-handed, we're starting where we left off. So then Loki went and commissioned the sons of Avaldi to make some beautiful new hair for Sif, and they even threw in two more sick presents for Odin and Frey. Wow, this problem was actually super easy to fix, and with these bonus gifts, the Aesir will probably owe me a huge solid. I wonder how I can ruin this situation for myself. So then they went to a dwarf named Brock and bet their head that his brother Atri couldn't make three even better gifts. Uh, sure, I'll take you up on that bet, but I have one question. Sure, go ahead. Why do you do this to yourself, Loki? I don't know. So Atri got to work and told Brock to manage the bellows and to not stop pumping for any moment until all three of his gifts for the gods were finished. But while they were working, a mysterious fly appeared from no discernible point of origin and harassed Brock the entire time. And he ended up getting distracted at the last second, causing the last gift to be botched. And then Loki and Brock brought their gifts to be judged by the gods. Thank you all for coming! My first gift is for Sif, who is recently the victim of a tragic theft committed by an unidentified culprit. But don't worry, because today I present to you I Can't Believe It's Not Hair! Made from the finest gold threads, I Can't Believe It's Not Hair fuses directly to the scalp upon application and grows like natural hair. Side effects may include redness, itching, swelling, burning, and other forms of mild to severe irritation. Do not use I Can't Believe It's Not Hair if you are diabetic, epileptic, anemic, or if you are nursing, pregnant, or maybe pregnant. If you experience dizziness, lightheadedness, or nausea soon after applying I Can't Believe It's Not Hair, contact your doctor immediately. Wow, pretty good. All right, I'll keep your other 205 bones intact for now, Loki. And up next for Odin is Gungnir. All right, now look, you take a regular old spear, you throw it at your enemies. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. But now your spear is gone. You just gave it to your enemies. Stop giving your weapons to your enemies. Get Gungnir. Now look at this. One shot, two shots, three shots. It hits your target every time and then comes right back to you. You don't have to waste your time going to get your spear. And even if you did, guess what? All your enemies are dead now. Total life changer. Hey, I actually really like that. Yeah, very nice. Man, I wish I had a cool magic weapon. And finally, my last gift for Frey. Are you tired of transporting your heavy warships across land? There's gotta be a better way. Introducing Skidbladnir, the first fully armed warship that fits in your pocket. Wow, we. And wherever you choose to sail Skidbladnir, you're guaranteed to have a favorable wind in any direction or your money back. Thanks, Skidbladnir. Hey, that's cool. Super neat. I don't even remember filming that. Well, good luck, Brock. I hope you and your brother didn't <laughs> mess anything up, because the competition is tough. Uh, yeah, so my brother's first gift for Odin is called Draupnir. It's a gold ring that creates eight rings of equal mass every nine nights. How exactly is that possible? I'm not sure. My brother said something about quantum physics and dark matter. Huh, pretty neat. Anyway, next for Frey is this gold boar named Gulenbursty. Uh, it can run real fast on air and water, and oh yeah, it also makes for a good nightlight. That was kind of an incidental feature. Oh, awesome, I've always wanted a pet. And this last gift for Thor is called Mjolnir, and before anyone says anything, I want to take full responsibility for tarnishing what otherwise would have been my brother's masterpiece. <sighs> the handle is about three centimeters shorter than it was supposed to be. Ooh. But subpar ergonomics aside, it can be thrown with perfect accuracy, it can shrink for convenient carrying, and it won't break no matter how hard you hit stuff with it, so you can pretty much kill monsters nonstop. 20 out of 10! I don't think that's how our rating system works. 20 out of 10! Uh, yeah, 20 out of 10. Yep, looks like Brock and Atri win fair and square. Well, looks like I can take your head now, Loki. Oh, sure, just give me one second. Ow, my other bone! Wow, this thing is great. All right, Loki, a deal's a deal. Indeed it is. And uh, if you look at the fine print of our agreement, you'll see that while you're free to take my head, you're not entitled to my neck. So you better not cut off any of my neck along with my head or you'll be having a word from my lawyer, sir. Mm, solid case. Damn, he got him there. You gotta read the fine print. Ugh, man, you suck. If my brother the sentient sewing needle were here, I'd totally sew your mouth shut. Did somebody say sentient sewing needle? Ah! <laughs>
Well, if anyone needs me, I'm gonna be out killing monsters with my cool new hammer for the next several months. Peace. And with Thor on sabbatical, the gods started to notice that they were uncomfortably vulnerable in the hypothetical event of a mass Jotun invasion. Then one day, a guy named Master Builder, rumored to be pretty good at building things, came and offered to build them a defensive wall for the low price of the sun, the moon, and the goddess Freya's hand in marriage. <laughs> no way we'd ever make a deal like that, right guys? Guys? A big wall would be nice. Yeah, but the sun and the moon are pretty important. Also, the third thing. Oh, hold on, let me loosen your mouth stitches. Ah! Ah, thanks. Anyway, what I was saying was, why don't we take him up on his deal, but give him a hard deadline that he'll never meet, so in the end, we'll get at least part of a wall and not have to pay for it. Hey, that's a good idea. Damn, you're on a hot streak, Loki. May I object to this course of action? Nope, just checking. So the gods took Master Builder's offer, but told him that if he didn't finish the wall by the first day of summer, he'd lose his payment. That works for me, but is it all right if my horse just helps me carry stuff? Uh, sure, that sounds fine. Perfect, thanks. <laughs> well, off to work. Well, shit. And with the help of his horse Fadalfari, Master Builder was able to put the wall together with lightning speed. And as summer drew near, the gods started to get worried and called a meeting, where they politely asked Loki if they had any ideas for a way out of their conundrum. D don't worry, I've already concocted a foolproof plan for halting their progress. I'll simply divert my target's attention through the art of seduction. That's an interesting approach, but are you sure that would work on the Master Builder? What does the Master Builder have to do with anything? Oh, God. And then, while Master Builder and his horse were on their way to pick up their last load of bricks, a ravishing young mare appeared. And Svadalfari was so enamored that he forgot about his job and bounded off with his new lady friend, leaving Master Builder to try and finish the wall alone as quickly as he could. But as the first day of summer finally arrived, his efforts proved to be in vain. Hey, no fair, you guys pulled some shenanigans. If it's any consolation, we didn't exactly get out of this unscathed. Mentally, at least. Oh, you'll be plenty more scathed when I'm done. Ow! Oh! 206 of my bones! Oh, hey Thor, nice to see you're back. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun killing monsters with this hammer. <laughs> <clears throat> ah, sorry, I've had a long day, so I'm a little hoarse. Ugh. Ew. So where's Loki? They just horsing around somewhere? Ah. Oh. Anyway, I need to go grab some dinner. I'm so hungry I could eat a whole- Stop! And then after, uh... Oh lord, forgive me for this one. 11 to 12 months, Loki returned accompanied by an eight-legged foal named Sleipnir. And Sleipnir could run super fast, so when he grew up, Odin claimed him as his personal steed. Well, Loki, looks like your shenanigans once again helped us in the end. I sure am glad I made that blood pact with you. Aw, thanks. I know my antics can get pretty wacky, but I promise I'll always be a good friend and never betray you guys. Oh hi Balder, you're looking very murderable today. What? Nothing. Thanks for watching my video. If you want to learn more about Loki from the actual Old Norse sources, you should check out Jackson Crawford's video about them, because he sure knows more about this stuff than me. Anyway, it's 1am, which is pretty good as far as nights before uploading a new video go, so I'm gonna sleep now. <sighs> like, comment, subscribe.